Hey guys, today we're going to talk about citizen science. Citizen science is the idea that anyone can be a scientist if they want to, they just have to find a project that interests them and get started. So today we're going to be talking about creating a bug collection. Insects are really important to our ecosystem and they're some of the first signs that the environment around us is changing. So it's super important that we monitor our levels and know what kind of insects we have in the areas that we live. So let's get started. You may be wondering, is this ethical? Is it good to take insects from their home and put them in my own personal insect collection? Well, studies have shown that hobbyist entomologists have zero impact on insect populations. Insects have high over turnover rates. They produce quickly, their lifespans are pretty short, and they produce large numbers. So it's pretty hard to damage them. A good way to think of it is all the invasive species of insects that have come to America that hurt our environment that we've been trying to get rid of for years and years and years with pesticides and plenty of resources and we still have not been able to do it. It's also important to remember that your collection can later help conserve insects. These bugs that you find and add to your collection can later help scientists understand what the environment was like when you were living in it and can better understand their insect population at the time that they're looking at them. So before you go catch some bugs, there are a few things that you need to get started. Most importantly, you need a net. This is a really, really long net that lets me get really high up, up in trees that are blooming or get things that are far away, deep in fields. So having a long net is really useful, but any net will do. You will also need jars. So with me, I have two different kinds of jars. One is just a standard food jar that I emptied and cleaned out. And then this is a killing jar. So killing jars are regular jars that have plaster in them that you charge with a liquid solution like ethyl acetate or even just nail polish remover works. And this is good for when you're catching things like Lepidoptera, which are butterflies and moss, who have very fragile wings, who you want to kill faster because they can ruin their wings otherwise flapping around in a jar. Lastly, it's important that you wear the proper attire when you're collecting bugs. Today it's really sunny, so I'm wearing a hat to protect my face. I'm wearing long sleeves and long pants, as well as have my pants tucked into some boots. You can also tuck your pants into your socks. The point is you want to protect your skin from ticks. You're going to be outside going through tall grasses and all sorts of terrain that likely have ticks. Um, you also should wear bug spray if possible. I know it doesn't really seem to make sense. You're catching bugs, but you're wearing bug spray, but you'd want to keep bugs away from yourself and your skin because you don't want to get bug bites and Lyme's disease and all that nasty stuff. So where can we find bugs? Meadows are a great place to start. There's lots of pollinators like bees, flies, butterflies, beetles in these fields, as well as grasshoppers, spiders, all kind of stuff. So meadows are a great place to start, but depending on what kind of bug you're looking for, your environment will change that you look for them in. So if you're looking for bugs that come out at night, like moths, you might want to set up a light sheet, which is a, basically a big sheet that you shine a bright light onto and it will attract insects. If you're looking for aquatic insects, you might want to bring a net to a pond and scoop in there. If you're looking for things like centipedes and roly polies, you might want to roll over a rotten log. So depending on what bug you're looking for, that will affect the environment that you look in. Today, I'm going to be catching bugs in our meadow. So come along with me and let's see what we can find. Alrighty, so I have two guys in my net right now. One of them I think is a grasshopper and the other I think might be a small bee. So when you catch bugs, you're going to want to come from the side or you're going to want to come down on them. Most flying insects, their instinct is to go up, so you want to come from downward. It's also important that you kind of whip your net around afterwards really fast like this to keep them at the end of the net. You also want to fold it over so they can't escape. Um, you can also hold your net tight to keep them in here. The next thing you want to do is get one of your jars. So now you can see I have a little grasshopper friend.
So now that we've caught some bugs, let's head inside and talk about preserving your insects. Depending on what kind of bugs you catch will determine how you preserve them. For example, if you have a soft bodied bug like a caterpillar, you might put it in an alcohol solution. If you have a butterfly, you might press them in a Riker mount box. If you want to make your insects easy to handle, you might put them in resin or lucite. Most likely, you will pin your insects. For pinning your insects, you need insect pins, tweezers, and foam. You might also want a pinning block so you pin your insect at the right height. Pin location will change from bug to bug. For example, bees, you might want to put the pin through the right side of the thorax in between the first and second leg. For beetles, however, you put it on the right elytra between the second and third leg. Look up what insect you have before you pin it to make sure you put your pin in the right place. Once you have your insect pinned, then you can start articulating its different body parts. You might want to move its legs or its antenna or even spread its wings to help better identify your insect and also just for aesthetics. They look better when they look a little bit more lifelike. The last and most important step is labeling your insect. Without a label, an insect is not scientifically useful. On your label, you'll want to include where you found the insect, ideally the GPS coordinates, what day you found it, any important information like what kind of plant it might have been on or the method that you captured it, and then your name so they know who collected it. You'll make another label separately that has the genus and species on it. So that is my beginner guide to starting an insect collection. I hope you are inspired to do so and if you are, please send in your pictures of whatever bugs you find to our Instagram. We're at Earthplace Connecticut. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.